Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand up. We're going to have a few words here. I'm Pastor Kent Church Union from the First United Methodist Church of Walton. It's my pleasure to pray with you today, but first I would like to introduce a new pastor in our midst for Walton. This is Reverend Dr. Paul Huff, and he is the pastor of the United Presbyterian Church just here on North Street. Nice to meet so we'd you. We'd like to welcome him to the community. Welcome. We're excited to have him in the ministry. Would you join me in prayer? Holy Spirit, creator of all, you claim us all as your children, as your creation. You love us all and have given us gifts generously. Tonight we ask that this village board feels your spirit and is, are enabled to use the gifts they have been given to serve you in this community. We ask a blessing on them, and a blessing, thank you, for no major snowstorm so far. Bless these proceedings, and to all who participate in them. May be, they be for the benefit of the community and the world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And we have a moment of silence to uh, mock the passing of Mr. Keith Davis. hearing on the CBBG grant application. Motion. 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 Motion, Second. Made. Motion made and seconded to open up the uh, public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. Public hearing is now open. You have anything on your uh, then? Bill uh, and or Mark. I have you marked down to speak if you'd like to unmute yourselves. On speaker phone. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Um, Good Bill. So we're going to need uh, Mark to read. Maybe read through the public um, the notice that went in the paper and, and give the board a heads up on the uh, program that we are discussing applying for funding for, um, if that works. Mark Lauer uh, just had to step away for a minute. He was uh, on another um, public hearing at 615 and will be rejoining us here in a few minutes. Okay, that's why you lost him. We'll on until we can read through the public hearing notice. Okay. Uh, that would be a good starting point. Is it, can you see what's going on also on there? Yeah. Okay. Do you, does, does other people hear Bill? Yeah. It's just us that can't hear it's it. It's just us. It's not okay. Problem. So it's just an audio problem on our part, so everybody else can hear you, Bill. So okay. go, go ahead and yeah. do what you've got to do. I still have the, the Zoom turned on um, to, to the best of my knowledge here. Yep. Um, Eric nodded yeah. and said, yes, everybody's still able to hear great. Yeah. Just that we can't hear you, so you're going to be talking through like my phone right now. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to read the uh, public hearing notice that was in the paper. Um, the Village of Walton will hold a public hearing on February 1st, 2021 at 6 p.m. At Walton Village Hall, uh, 21 North Street, Walton, New York, 1356, for the purpose of the public hearing on comments of the Village of Walton's community development needs and to discuss the possible submission of one or more community development block grant CDBG applications for the 2020 year. Due to the COVID-19 emergency and bans on large meetings and gatherings and pursuant to Governor Cuomo's Executive Order 220.1, issued on March 12, 2020, suspending the open meetings law. The public may attend this hearing electronically. The public can find access.
access the information on Zoom at villagewealth.com. The CDPG program is administered by the New York State Office of Community Renewal, OCR, and will make available to eligible local governments approximately $49 million for the 2020 program year for housing, economic development, public facilities, public infrastructure, and planning activities with the principal purpose of benefiting low and moderate income persons. The hearing will provide further information about the CDBG program and will allow for citizen participation in the development of any proposed grant applications and or provide technical assistance to develop alternative proposals. Comments on the CDBG program or proposed projects will be received at this time. The hearing is being conducted pursuant to section 570.486 subpart 1 of, CF, of the CFR and in compliance with the requirements of the Housing and Community, Community Development Act of 1974 as amended. At the hearing, the bill will describe types of grant assistance available from the New York State Office of Community Renewal and will seek comments and suggestions for the public as to the proposed uses of the community development block grant funds, the types of activities that may be undertaken with community development block grant funds include acquisition and disposition of real property, public facilities and improvements, clearance activities, public services, payment of non-federal share of other federal program, removal of architectural barriers, relocation, rehabilitation and preservation activities, economic development and job creating activities. Draft applications for community development block grant assistance will be discussed. The village is considering a 2020 CFA public infrastructure application in an amount not to exceed $1 million to rehabilitate segments of the wastewater treatment plant to ensure speedies permit compliance and increase overall facility, the overall facilities efficiency. The proposed project will primarily benefit low and moderate income persons. The Walton Village Hall is accessible to persons with disabilities. As special accommodations are needed for persons with disabilities, those with hearing impairments, or those in need of transition, translation from English, those individuals should contact Village Clerk Jody Brown, Village Walton Village Hall, 21 North Street, Walton, New York, 1356, at phone number 607-865-4358, or by email at vclerk at stny. RR.com at least one week in advance of the hearing date to allow for necessary arrangements. Written comments may also be submitted to Mayor to Stephen Condon, Village Mayor, Walton Village Hall, 21 North Street, Walton, New York, 13856 until February 11th, 2021. Um, that was a public hearing notice that was in the, the um, Daily Star and also in the Walton Report. Um, this past week, um, they, basically what we had brought to the board's attention um, here earlier this year was that the funding program through the community development, the community development block grant program through the Office of Community Renewal um, is available to the village of Wallen um, to apply for funding to upgrade um, what we had recommended was upgrades to the wastewater treatment plan. Um, the program provides funding up to a million dollars um, to persons who, based on census data, um, have a low to moderate income um, of their residents uh, that exceeds 51%. So based on census data, the Village of Walton um, qualifies for submitting an application to this program, um, which, like we mentioned in the, um, the notice, can go towards public infrastructure, um, generally that benefits the entire um, municipality. So uh, the, the wastewater treatment plant, um, located at 54 South Street, um, has been in operation since the early 70s. Um, there are a few pieces of equipment there that are central to the process that have been in place and in operation since that time in the early 70s, um, notably the clarifiers and the uh, sludge thickeners. Uh, those are large um, mechanical pieces of equipment um, that are critical to the process and making sure that everything works and what ultimately goes out to the river is in compliance with the speedies permit. So, um, those are items that, you know, we do need to have um, replaced um, because they're at the end of their useful life and they're items that have a uh, large capital value that isn't something the village is likely to be able to fund through um, normal O&M operations. Um, so we had um, proposed uh, submitting an application to the Office of Community Renewal um, to offset a cost.
this. Um, the uh, ability to apply for this is based on, um, we said, census data. Um, and the goal of the program is to benefit um, with the monies that are available, um, persons of low to moderate income. Um, the, uh, the Village of Walton um, does qualify for that. Um, they haven't in the past. Um, so we did want to bring this to the board's attention that um, there is a possibility of applying for this funding. And there's no matching or anything to this grant, correct? Correct. If, if the um, project costs uh, are less than the, the million dollars, there would not be any local match required. That's the, we're, we're looking to um, you know, phase the project or structure the project such that it would have a cost of less than the, the million dollar cap yep. um, so there wouldn't be any uh, local funds, um, local match required. We do, you know, as, as part of this public hearing, um, if people have other ideas um, beyond what we've, we've mentioned with upgrades at the wastewater plant, if there's other needs in the community that members of the public um, would like to bring to the board's attention, um, those could be considered for a potential application as well. Um, so that, that's really the purpose of the public hearing um, is so that members of the public have that opportunity. So with anybody in the on the public side, um, if that's at all helpful, hopefully. Um, and if you have any questions or um, have any comments, um, now would be the time to um, present those. Um, you can also submit them in writing um, to the mayor or to the village clerk. Up, up to February 11th, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, anybody on that's got any questions? Anybody can see? Any questions? Bill, you're watching too. Has anybody got any <coughs> questions on there? Um, I haven't seen any pop up here. So we'll quickly give folks a minute or two. We do have a couple of folks on the on the call here, so that's good. Okay. So if folks want to submit them in writing, um, send an email or a letter. Um, the, the board can consider that. The actual applications are due uh, March 5th, I believe. Um, so we are uh, working to prepare um, an engineering report um, to serve as the basis for the application. And Mark Blauer is the grant writer, um, and he is um, be preparing the application itself for submission to the uh, office. Right. Okay. You good on your side, Eric? Anything else? Does anybody else have any questions while we have them on the line? Um, there was one that just popped up here. Okay. Uh, I to confirm the email. Um, so the email, if, if folks do have questions on the, the funding application, um, we recommend submission to the village clerk. Um, that email address is bclerk at stny.rr.com. If you want me to give them the mailing address one more time. Yep. Thanks, Eric. You got it. You put you already punched in. Okay, good. Okay. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, Christian, we are accepting questions. Yes, you can type that in the chat. You can type your question in the chat. Question from Christian, and uh, so the question here is: Can the grant money be allocated to community resources, or does it directly benefit families in the community? Uh, one sec, I just saw that there. Did you see the? Answer or excuse me, the question, Bill. Uh, can this grant money be allocated to community resources, or does it directly benefit families in the community? Um, it would be towards community resources. Um, in this case, you know, public infrastructure, which uh, the I believe every every lot in the village um, is connected 
to the um, sanitary sewer system, which is then um, drains to the wastewater plant. Um, so it's it's not it's not directly um, you know the funds aren't directed to you know people um, directly. It's towards uh, public infrastructure and things that benefit the community. As well. Say ben benefits the community as a whole. Just joined us and uh, had some input in the chat as well. Okay. Um, it needs to be specific, a project specific, like water, wastewater, storm drainage, road, sidewalks. Um, so it's it's something like I said that benefits the community as a whole. That has an impact on um, you know the entire um, community. In this case, the village, which is defined um, and uh, assessed on the census. Any other That's questions? Any any additional additional questions? Please type them in. <clears throat> I think we are good to move on. Okay. We do have a motion. Motion, motion to close this portion. Motion. <coughs> Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Do we need to do any other paperwork now, Bill? Um, I'm not sure if we authorized the uh, grant agreement with Mark at the last board meeting. I know we discussed it. I think we're waiting till um, the public hearing was held. Right, because we, we, we got him started, but we didn't agree on the whole thing. You're right, because we wanted to get him moving on, so we need to... We did. We did agree to have him do everything? Mm -hmm. Okay, then it's all done. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I guess we're all good on this now. Yep. Um, there'll be... I believe there is um, signatures, ultimately, that are um, included in the application. Right. Uh, so we'll, we'll be reaching out to uh, get those signed mm -hmm. later on. Okay. All right. Anybody, you want to do your... Uh, Actually, no, I haven't opened up the meeting yet, so yeah. I've closed that. But yeah, we've already gone through that part of it. So yeah, do you have anything under Delaware Engineering you want to uh, bring up while you're on the line? Um, yep. So this is uh, one of two uh, funding applications that the village is anticipating applying um, the CDBG program for upgrades at the wastewater plant. Um, we had talked last month about applying for funding to uh, do an I&I &I study, which is inf infiltration and inflow. Right. Um, New York State Environmental Facilities has um, applications out right now to uh, prepare engineering uh, planning, or to prepare engineering reports. The program is called the Engineering Planning Grant Program, um, and we had talked about applying for funding to do an I&I &I study. Um, there's a lot more water that's coming into the sewer system that, that should be, um, which ultimately translates to higher cost to operate the facility, which translates to higher cost to um, rate payers and reduces the potential for new sources of flow into the wastewater um, treatment plant. Um, so we're looking at applying for funding for that um, study to EFC. Um, that application is due February 12th. Um, the, that grant does have a local match. Um, it's, a, it's funding to do a study up to $100,000, and there is a 20% local match, which would translate to $20,000 that the village would kick in, have to kick in if the full grant was awarded. Uh, if the village wants to uh, proceed with that, we would recommend um, for the application to include a resolution authorizing um, that the local match has been um, allocated or that, that the village board agrees to um, that local match uh, provision. Uh, there is a resolution that EFC had on their website um, that we filled in the blanks um, for this project on um, that you know, states the village has a wastewater treatment plant and sewer system. And that we have an obligation to it. the I and I um, that's going on. It is actually a provision in your speedies permit that you have to, you know, go out and find out what's going on with I and I and keep up with it, uh, which the village has.
has been doing over the last couple of years. Um, you know, the DPW department has done some repairs in the collection system, which has, has helped. Yes. Um, it's still a, a big animal, um, and it would be helpful to look at it from kind of a global standpoint. Um, so we had recommended um, trying to get funding to do this study, which would entail going out and really surveying the collection system. Um, and uh, you know, putting cameras in and, and flow meters and finding out where water's coming in that shouldn't be so it can be um, fixed. Right. So um, I know there is, uh, I believe we had included in past year's budget money towards collection system repairs. So I believe the concept had been to, um, that the local match is agreed to by the board um, that the funding come out of that line item. Well, we wouldn't be expending it until next year, so we could right. put it in we'll this it coming budget. budget. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, you're right, it wouldn't be until later. Okay, so what's the board feel? Do you want to go ahead with this program to, to look into it and do the uh, study? <coughs> so this is, uh, again, so this will not be any costs up front for the study, correct? Sounds well, like we can pay up, if, we can pay, if it's a $100,000 grant, we have to come up with 20000 Eventually, but for the initial study itself, to get the process going, no, there's no money yeah, coming out right now. Yeah, no, there's no cost for the application. If if the application is submitted um, later this month, it'll probably be several months before you hear. Right. Um, and then it would likely be a next year project to do the actual study, and that's when the cost will come into play. Um, we usually try to do these um, studies in the spring when the ground water is the highest and have the most water coming into your system. Um, so it would probably be spring of 2022 um, before it would, it would come into play. Um, so I think like Jody said, it would be something that would need to be incorporated into the budget that the board is looking at currently um, for the next calendar year, for the next budget year. Are there any projections percentage-wise as to what the village could save? I know that the INI is costing us lots of money. So are there any projections as to once we do this study and God willing it solves most of our issues, uh, you know, how much of our investment we're going to get back on that with our 20000 and how long it might take to get our money back? So the this, this study is would just be would, the study itself wouldn't have any specific return. That, you know, to answer your question bluntly, the study would be a summary and a recommendation to make repairs, um, likely to do a capital project. You know, to replace this line, um, to line line this, to fix manholes here, um, those types of things. Um, so the 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 capital project um, would be where there would probably be a bigger. Um, you know, we would need to find funding for that, um, and that's what would reduce um, ultimately flows to the plant, which would reduce operational costs of the plant. So, um, the initial study um, specifically, no, it wouldn't reduce the operational costs of the plant, um, but the implementation of the things in that study would. Um, and no, I can't give you a specific dollar amount, but what we're trying to do is re reduce. Um, you know, hundreds of thousands of gallons a day of groundwater that is coming into the wastewater plant currently. Um, and people don't realize what it is. It's like if the pipes are broken, um, cracks in the manholes, things like that. A lot of groundwater comes in, and that's what it's treating. And uh, to get an idea of how much it would save, I, I wouldn't dare guess what it would save. But I know every little bit of water we're not putting into the system that's not supposed to be there is, is going to be a savings. Right. Even though I mean, that, that's one of the things in the study that would be addressed as a cost benefit for, you know, if we spend this much money on repairs, you know, what's our, um, you know, what's our payback on that? You know, if we spend $50,000 on repairs, are we, you know, is it going to take two years to realize that, you know, and energy savings? Is it going to take 10 years or 20, you know, that, that type of thing? So that's, that's part of what the study would identify is looking at different options and coming up with, you know, kind of a tiered approach to these are the biggest, you know, things that would have the biggest impact. This would have less impact. This would have less impact, you know, based on the condition that's that's identified. Um, and then, you know, having, you know, the cost um, looked at from a payback standpoint um, on that. Just, and, and that's what would dictate the scope of the repairs. You know, maybe you wouldn't, if you find 10 things that are wrong in the, in the system, you know, maybe you fix five of them or six 
of them, two of them, you know, but depending on what those costs are and what the payback is. Yeah. Answer your so question. That's yes, sir. Yeah, I was I was just looking for you know a ballpark. Really and, but your question. I don't I don't I don't doubt at all that it will save us money in the long run. Right. Thank you. Any questions online? Yeah. So just to just to clarify what our obligations are here. Uh, there's no money budgeted for this study for this year for this application because right. that money only is applicable if we get awarded the grant, right? The, yes. Right. Correct. So, so, uh, so yeah. Uh, does that answer the written question? So that, that doesn't affect this year's the 2021 budget. Right, the 2020 to 2021 budget that's currently in place. No, it doesn't have a specific yeah. um, obligation budget item to pay for this application, but there there isn't a cost associated with um, the application itself. Right. The cost comes if the grant is awarded, and then in order to get the state's dollars, the village has to produce the local share. And we won't even know if that once the application's in until into the next budget. Um, anyways, it's going right. to be it's going to be several months before they give us an answer. That's for our expectation. There is a, I mean, they don't. We don't know if it's going to be a two month turnaround or a six month turnaround. Right. Um, in years past, it's been a four to five month turnaround. So we'll, we'll see what it is in twenty twenty one. Yeah. Any other questions on there? Uh, I don't see any other questions. Okay. Are you going to do a motion? Yes, I'm going to do a motion on this. You want to do, uh, have somebody give me a motion on whether we want to do this or not? Can I make the motion that we proceed with the application? Second. The motion made second to uh, go ahead with the application. Um, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Carried. You will get stuff together for us, Bill? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> It's mostly digital, so we'll, have, we'll, we'll um, get with you and log into the um, system and okay. um, we'll digitally sign the paperwork. Okay. But yeah, we've got information from um, from Jody in the clerk's office and um, from from the guys at the wastewater plant and some of the different um, you know application criteria. Okay. Very good. Okay. Anybody else got anything for Bill? Nope. I think we're good, nope. Bill. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, I'm going to hang up on you now. <laughs> Thanks. All righty then. Yeah. Do this. We want to go to this. Uh, do you know if uh, Julia Spites is on? She is. She is. Yep. So I'll give her that, that number. Yep. <laughs> What'd you say? Steets. Oh, Steets. <laughs> just have her call on. Be like a radio talk show. We have a call on. Hi, Julia, can you hear us? Oh, oh. yes, I can. There. I'm just going to step away from my computer to stop this feedback. I see that. Can you hear me now? Yep, yep, we can hear you now. Thank you, everyone, for the time. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Um, has everybody had a chance to look over? Yes. To the proposal, okay. Yes. So everybody's familiar with it, and we're kind of up to speed. So uh, um, Julie and I, we had a nice conversation the other day talking about some of the stuff that's going on around the community, and... Um, she wants to, to try to form a uh, youth type center. Um, so go ahead, Julia, the floor is yours. If you would like to uh, bring up anything and the board here will fire back some questions at you, hopefully, or even the public. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just an intro on who 
I am. I was born and raised in Walton. Um, I since went to college at Binghamton University. I found a passion for business, and um, I currently work for BlackRock, a global wealth management company um, that does a lot of philanthropic community development work. Um, and as I was helping to do this work for so many other communities all across the United States. Um, in my mind, I pictured Walton being a community where this type of work could really make a difference. And so with that being said, I'm here to propose um, a space for myself and my team at BlackRock to come in and turn into a not-for-profit community center, um, not only for kids, but also for adults. And um, I'm looking for some space, um, but other than the space, I would be taking the lead on getting the funding, on getting the labor resources, anything that the project would need. So um, long story short, that is the proposal and kind of where my heart is at. Um, when I was a kid, I remember sitting at McDonald's after school because it was the only place with Wi-Fi for me to do my homework until they kicked myself and my friends out because that was the only place to do homework. Um, I do understand that Molto Espresso is now available. However, it doesn't have a place for kids to be kids, kids like play video games or play basketball or um, a pool table or anything like that that other community centers have. Um, so this is kind of the vision. It would be a place where kids can go after school, where adults could go um, late morning and read a book if they like without any, um, without any cost to them. So there's the vision. Um, it just by matter of fact, our uh, prayer lead tonight uh, was through Kent. I, I always mess up his name. Teratuchian. Teratuchian. Um He handed me a proposal, something he's been working on, and I think I talked with you about a youth and uh, community type center. Um, but he just handed me the proposal tonight, and I haven't had a chance to look at it. And uh, I may forward some of that information over to you, too, so that you can see what he's envisioning also. Okay. Um, yes, that's that's wonderful. I, I do know that in the past, uh, when I was still living in the community, um, New Hope Community Church was trying to put together a space. Um, in fact, I know that in the church basement, there is um, foosball and some other some other resources for, for kids to to use. However, um, after years, I, I don't believe that there have been that many kids who utilize that space. Um, and the vision that I have is that there, as I try not to be blunt when I say this, but well, I know I that think, I'm I think what you're talking that. about is you want something for all walks of life, no matter what. Yes. Yeah. So no, um, no one needs to be a part of a certain organization organization to spend time at this center. Um, so often, what I've seen is when I was in school, the kids who were really hurting for a place to go, the first place that they turned to was not a church. And I know that that sounds blunt, um, and and I don't mean it to. I just I just mean that I think that a space where religion is not attached to it and where kids can, if they want to play basketball and they want to blast music that might have a couple swear words in it, it's not going to be a problem. Like, that type of an environment is what I'm envisioning. Um, almost as if it's like a college-type space um, where there would be resources for kids to start developing resumes for going to college, a place where there would be study pods, a place where there would be a foos table, um, an Xbox set up for kids to play uh, video games. There would be snacks that they could buy at cost. So if we buy them for 50 cents a bottle of Gatorade, they could buy them for 50 cents a bottle of Gatorade. Um, completely not for profit and a space that would be open seven days a week from morning until late at night, giving kids a space to go without feeling the need to be a part of a certain organization. Anybody got any questions for her at the moment? 
would the operators of this space be volunteers, or would there be, be some sort of an organization that was involved with uh, hiring people to work there? Um, so my my proposal is that this building, the, all of all of the improvements that happen there, would be paid for by the team that, that I put together and the the grants and funding that we have access to. Um, so my proposal is that we would pay for everything, but that the village would own it. So that could potentially bring. Um, a job or two to potentially a cleaning person um, but one of my thoughts regarding volunteers I have not spoken to anyone um, with the National Honor Society at the high school but um, I know that between probably 10 and 15 kids are members of the National Honor Society and they do have uh, community service hours that they're mandated to get in um, and I thought that that could be a good place to start in regards to getting some volunteers um, to man the desk, to kind of monitor what's going on there. Um, we could include a camera system that could be monitored. Um, but this is this vision that I have for for something that's self-sustaining um, is something that exists in many communities that um, the firm I work for has been able to touch, and it's unbelievably successful. Um, it just needs to be given a chance. With full funding. With full, with full funding, is is that a question? I mean, um, what? Yes, I mean, <coughs> your, your 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 backers are sustaining you with full funding. You just need space. Correct. That's impressive. Yes, I'm. I'm on a big mission here. <laughs> has, has Blackwater done a lot of projects like this in the past, and have they have they been successful? So this year alone, well, 2020 alone, BlackRock sponsored 26 boys and girls clubs across America. They basically made a list of um, what they needed. So do you need a pool table? Do you need a foosball table? Do you need 20 beanbag chairs? Do you need Lysol cans? to keep kids safe in the space during COVID-19. All of these, all of the resources they needed, BlackRock rallied behind, and we funded all of that um, through Amazon Wishlist, and those packages were at their door within two days. So this is a firm um, that manages seven trillion, and we have a major component of giving back to communities that are in need and doing it in a very sustainable way. So, um, How, how's the longevity? Funding. How's the longevity on it, Julia? Do they they keep funding and help uh, with years down the road, or is it just start up and then it's uh, got to be taken over by somebody else? So this would at, this would actually be the first time where BlackRock has been kind of the has been part of the seed bringing um, a, a community center from the ground up. Um, in the past, in this past year, it's been donating to already existing clubs to help keep them open and to replace resources within those clubs that have either been overused or just simply need um, replacement or more of that type of a thing. Mm -hmm. But um, I have top executives at the firm who are excited about this initiative um, and I've spoken with some local people uh, a local loan officer who is responsible for a lot of the scholarships that go to students in Walton who are going off to college um, I've spoken with him as as getting on board um, and I think that it would be a great opportunity for local people who are um, you know blue blue collar laborers to join me in putting in a basketball court, putting in um, the proper insulation that, that a building would need to make sure that when we heat it, it's not taking too much too much money. Um, so in regards to funding um, and the sustainability aspect of it, I think Steve was, Steve, you asked? Yes, yes, I did. Um, so in regards to, to that, this would not be something where... Um, BlackRock or anyone else, I think, could commit to paying for 
service long term. It would be owned by the village. So we would come in, give you the resources, and make it happen. But the village would be responsible to sustain those costs. And I do understand after speaking with you, Steve, that um, that the tax budget is very tight yeah. on on the people of Walton. I totally understand that. I've looked at the census data um, at the average median income. I did do a little bit of quick math, though, and um, my understanding, based on the 2019 census data, which was most recent, is that the population of Walton is 3,258 people, um, and that about 25% of those people are below 18, so they do not pay taxes. Um, and then if you take another 10% of those people off who potentially are unemployed um, or maybe they're just unable to work, you get 2,199 people. And let's say the building, um, after we put in super high efficient uh, toilets, sinks, um, ultra high efficient lighting, we insulate it to the fullest. Um, let's say that building costs just rough estimate, depending on what size space, let's say it costs $10,000 to run per year. Um, you divide that by the number of taxpayers in the village of Walton, each taxpayer would pay $4.50 a year for this resource. Um, I think that when it comes to adding the, this type of a resource to a community, it, the initial expense of taxpayers in Walton, I believe that the initial expense would be next to nothing in the grand scheme of things because when people, especially with COVID-19, I was asked by, um, by a reporter who kind of, she heard about this, what I was trying to do in Walton. She asked me, well, do you think that COVID-19 is the right time to be doing something like this. People are hurting, um, budgets are tight. Is this proposal something that makes sense for a time like this? And my response to that is that there is no better time than this. And the reason for that is because data shows how many people are leaving cities. They're buying properties outside of New York City. We're only three hours away from New York City. Um, they're looking for places in the Catskills. When I moved away from Walton, um, I went to get a U-Haul in deposit, and they said that they were super short on them because people were moving from the cities to the Catskills, and they were using those trucks to take trips back and forth to bring all their belongings to the Catskills. So when you have people, you have an influx of people, and they're trying to choose what town to move into. And they can choose Walton, they can choose Sydney, they can choose Deposit, they can choose Hancock. All of them have access to the Delaware River. They all have access to the beautiful Catskill Mountains, um, the reservoir that's beautifully preserved. What, what town are they going to choose? Well, probably the one that has a resource for their kids to hang out at with other kids. And they're going to look for a place where they can sit with free Wi-Fi and where they can get, you know, snacks for their kids at a really cheap cost, something that's well maintained. So I would say that getting ahead of this influx of people as times are changing makes sense. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Anybody online? Have no, any I do. Oh, go ahead, Dick. Uh, um, Can you hear Dick okay? One of the things that comes up, <laughs> one of the things that comes up, is you're looking at the village and, and it's not our population. It's, we have like 1,300 parcels that are all that we can actually tax. And, and they decreased by a million dollars in the last year. Uh, you're talking something that would be available town-wide. Now, I know you approached the town, but what was their reaction to this? Right now, they pay us some of the cost of running the swimming pool in Austin Lincoln Park, which is well over $10,000 per year. Uh, so I, I was just wondering. I, I don't think it would come out to just $10,000, and it would cost about at least $10 per parcel just to cover it at your $10,000. Uh, plus, we may lose uh, another taxable piece of property. But when you approached the town, did they give you any, any indication that they would be interested in anything like that? I totally understand your question. Um, 
question. Um, yeah, so I did speak with Rhonda Williams, um, and she confirmed with me that she thinks that this is a fabulous idea and that this is a need for the community, um, that she is in support of the need. Um, she also said that there was a space just like this that she remembers um, many, many years ago, probably before I was even born, to be honest. Um, and she said that it was a space where kids could go after school. It was operated by a couple in the community. And it was, they just did it to do something nice for the community. But eventually they became too elderly to keep it up anymore. And it kind of just stopped and nothing came in to replace it. Um, so she said that she knows how popular and how utilized that space was years ago. And she doesn't think that this space would be underutilized either. Did she happen to mention that since she's president of the school board, there's plenty of real estate within the three Walton Central School buildings that are, already don't need improvement, they could house. Um, it would lend itself much better to a, a community of youth. Um, they have plenty of space and they're well established. Did, did that come up at all? No, so those, those spaces did not come up at all. Um, I remember when I was in high school, there were, I think, men's and women's basketball leagues that took place at the school after hours, um, later at night. But I, I don't know if that's come back into fruition or kind of what the deal is with the school staying open after hours. Um, that, is, that is something that we could potentially look into. Um, I just... I'm not sure, I, I went to school there, so I'm not sure what space within the school um, <clears throat> could house like a, a video game center, a half court basketball court, um, all sorts of stuff like that. I, one owned by the school doesn't ring a bell for me at this time. Now, is there a way, Julia, this is Steve again. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way that uh, you guys can get this money, do something up front, but a business or somebody can take this over versus the village? Or is that what you're geared? Is that what you're not? You're not geared for that, or is there a possibility? So that would that would make it a taxable um, entity, so that the village could could tax it. You're saying? Yeah, it would just it would just become a business, and somebody could you know you would you would start it up, and somebody could take it over, um, as far as running it or whatever like that. Is that something that's in the realm of doing, or is this just all strictly volunteer stuff that you're looking for and not for profit? Um, I'm very much leaning into the not for profit um, realm, and the reason I say that is because there are many, many opportunities for grants and donations to not-for-profit um, initiatives like this one. Okay. And I worry that if it took on a profitable position, mm -hmm. well, that might make sense for the village board at this time because it would be a taxable entity. Like we've seen with other businesses in the town of Walton that don't get enough funding to sustain themselves um, under a private owner, they tend to dry up. Um, so my worry is that that could potentially become the situation um, for, for this. And this is something that's meant to be a very long-term solution to a much-needed problem. If, if it was a non-profit established within the uh, confines of the village, would it be, bear with me, would it be similar to, say, like our, our library where the town and the school and the village each contribute portions of their tax allowance to sustain that institution? Would it be something like that? Um, so, so the way I think about it, and, and of course this is just kind of the initial proposal, so I, I don't have all the details ironed out, especially because I'm not sure what the space looks like, how much fun, how much funding 
it would need um, all that type of stuff. Kind of need more information to be able to give you complete answers. Um, however, I what I envision is that this would be a resource that the entire town would utilize, not just the people in the village. Um, so. I'm not sure how, like, like you mentioned, it's new news to me that, that the swimming pool and stuff like that that the town utilizes, um, some taxpayer money go, comes in from the town beyond the village. Um, so that would make sense to me. I'm, I haven't had that discussion with Rhonda Williams or anyone in the town, but um, I would be able to, and, and I could get back to you with that. It's the only model that I could you know, vision in my head, the way we run, we support the library and have to be sustained is that, that those three entities contribute to its support. And then it comes up every, is it every year, every every year as a vote? Well, um, only when they want to change it. Yeah. I, that's, the, that's, that's what I correlated to in my head, that's why I asked you like that. Understood. Yeah, um, it's just that aspect um, one one thing that I think is is important is like the the number one point of this is people move where they're treated best people move to commu communities where they're treated best and if the community thinks that it's a priority for children and adults to have a space to utilize to simply be themselves without having to be a part of any type of organization for them to walk in the door and i i even thought about you know potentially you have them pay two dollars a day or you know eight two dollars a day or a dollar plus a canned food item that could go to the town um food bank things like that um to come up with with different ways that people would be able to pay and that that payment could, could go toward keeping the building simply sustained. Um, if it's insulated from the beginning, if the structure of the building is sound, um, if good quality materials are used, then the, the electricity, the water, whatever it would take to keep the building alive would, would not be much. And I do, um, I do, Manage. I currently manage a nine-unit condo building in Massachusetts, and um, I have experience budgeting for jobs, um, large building improvements, and stuff like that on a very slim budget. So this is not something that's new for me. Right. Okay. Any questions pop up online, Eric? Uh, yeah, there's there's a few here. Um, <clears throat> can you hear him okay, Julia? Yeah, let me turn. Yep. Yeah. So. Um, just in terms of the, the flood proofing, uh, I, I assume the, the potential investors are aware of what is required in the floodplain. Um, how, how does the, the funding mechanism work to address those issues? So that would, that would be a conversation that myself and the team of people who would be working to find the funding would work with the code officer to figure out how would the space would need to be reconfigured to um, to address that concern. I understand that the bowling alley, which is the space that I originally proposed, um, the village kind of allocating to this type of a type of um, an initiative. I understand that that is the, probably a hefty reason why investors have not gobbled up that piece of real estate. Um, my worry is that I think that I remember the last time the bowling alley being open was like eight years ago. Um, I was actually on the high school bowling team and I loved that building <laughs> so much. Um, so if it's been vacant for this many years, that building and then the building where the hair salon used to be and the little arcade that came and it was a an owner that was for profit and then it closed, which is what I would expect if this was to be a profitable um, entity. There's, um, we've seen it happen, so I, I just don't think that it's 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 necessary to repeat history. Um, but that would be something that would be addressed with the code officer. Um, sorry, that was a long-winded answer. But. No, 
time of God. You know, there, there's a lot of moving parts to something like this, and it's just, just part of my thought process to, to make sure we're considering all those things. And I know that you mentioned those in your proposal too about flood plain uh, related things. So just want to keep that part of the conversation. Um, Any other questions? Yeah, there's another question here. Um, so I'm just going to paraphrase it. Pushing the project to the town level would eliminate availability of the location in question. Uh, does anyone on the village board have a compromised location owned by the town? Um, you know, again, and I, I don't want to speak out of turn, you know, these what we try, or what we're trying to focus on is the idea of shared services. We're working on that with the court. Um, I think the town and the village work in partnership with community-centered initiatives like the pool contribution, uh, like the parks contribution. So I think, in my mind, it has to be more of a partnership with the town. Um, and in terms of finding the appropriate space, that's something we, we I mean, that's, that's the biggest goal, is just finding the place to direct this, in, this initiative. Um, and the mayor said previously, what is the longevity? You know, how, how can this, who is on the hook to sus sustain a project like this? Um, I think, in my mind, it has to be a sustained obligation with both the town and the village. Uh, more of a, a partnership conversation. Um, so that, that's just my opinion there. Okay. I'm not sure how much it it costs to a, another kind of point that it just just to kind of bounce into the meeting is I'm not sure how much it costs to sustain um, like the pool the amount of water it takes to fill it, the chemicals, paying all the lifeguards, all of that type of stuff. And that's only open for a couple months a year. So it only benefits the community a couple months of the year. Of the year. This would be um, a situation where we would create, the resources that would be there would specifically be there um, to serve a purpose that is low cost. So, for example, the reason why I said basketball court is because you get the funding one time. You put in that court. That court is there, and those kids can use it. It's not like bowling lanes where you need to have a person who knows how to use an oiling machine, and that oiler needs to be refilled with all sorts of oil, and there needs to be certain settings to, to finish the lanes, and there's massive amounts of electricity. There's pin replacement, all of that type of stuff that those costs that come similar to a swimming pool. The chemicals, paying lifeguards, um, the netting, whatever it is. This type of a situation is, you know, here are the resources, let's put it up. You pay electricity, you pay the water bill, and bada bing, bada boom, that's what you pay for. Um, and then you request, as a, non, as a non for profit status, you request if the beanbag chairs get to be worn, you request donations. If, um, you need a, a new pool table, you request donations. Um, so that's kind of the vision there. Okay. <clears throat> I've got a, just a few other questions. Maybe these are best submitted in writing. Um, how much have taxpayers spent on the property to insure it without use? How is the village marketing the property? Um, yeah, those questions should be all submitted in writing, yeah. and then we can look them over. Yeah. Um, and then we will forward some of them over on to Julia so that she can see them also. Um, I think at this time, Julia, um, maybe we get a couple of board members that may keep in contact with you and see what we can come up with. I know Stephen, you, Stephen, you interested in helping her? Maybe keep in touch. I can correspond. With okay, you. Steve, Steve, see and our board member will correspond with you and keep in touch and see if we can move forward with a project like this. Maybe, uh, like you said, sharing things with the town also. Um, Wonderful. That'll be a conversation we'll have with them um, and see what we can come up with. But uh, I do appreciate it. I think it's something that would be nice for the community. And uh, yeah, anybody else have any questions before we're done? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Julia. Thank you for. Uh,
doing it this way. Having trouble with our audio. Having trouble with our audio. So, okay. No problem. All right. Uh, technology is not as smart as people think that it is. Yeah. So, no problem at all. I will. I will give a lot of the, I will give uh, contact information that I have from you via your your email, your cell phone, and stuff to Steve so he can correspond with you. Okay. Perfect. I all really right. appreciate it. Um, I hope that you all have a great, safe, and warm evening. Um, <laughs> and we will talk soon. Thank all you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let me get on to my list here. There it is. That one's done. Can you can you tell if uh, the EMS is on? Is Dave Simmons on? That's not a list that I haven't written on mine. No. It is, uh... All right, I have David on here. Okay, let me give him. Actually, have him. but I don't think I've got it handy right here. Hey, Dave. Can you... Can you hear us okay? Uh, yes, we can. All right, good. Uh, we'll be using this for our communications because we've got you on uh, on Zoom, but we're having trouble with our audio. Um, I think you're too close to your computer. If they move to, if they move to your computer, does that go away? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, can you hear us now, Dave? Yeah, let me move back a little bit further, yeah. Mute your two mirrors facing each other. Mute your computer. It should stop. I was doing that. Okay. All right. I do a classroom in Okay, good. Um, just to let everybody know what this is about is uh, we're getting a lot of chatter there, Dave. Sounds like a homicide. Yikes. Yeah, it sounds like a poor, sound like you're a poor dog. There. There you go. All right. Set, 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 your, set your phone down, yep. What is this topic? All right, are y'all set? Yep, can you hear me okay, Steve? Yep. All right. Yeah, Pat, uh, you know that I am here, and, um, and basically what we want to adjust the board with is um, we're on the Long Range Planning Committee with a number of other individuals from, uh, well, the village and the town and the fire department and interested, and uh, myself and Lou Jones came to the board a few months ago and discussed about we were looking at uh, the EMS uh, capabilities and servicing of the uh, district and the community and looking at putting a plan together which was put together, put on the shelf and things were pretty good for a while but they started to slip backwards again and uh, with a number of dropped calls so we have kind of taken that plan off the shelf and dusted it off and as a group, we are looking into what could be done uh, to put together better EMS services for the community at both the village and town of Walton and the part of the town of Hamden that's served by currently by the, uh, by the ambulance. And uh, of course, the Hamden is a contract. So the, the thing being is that um, currently, as uh, was discussed before, where there are the 
be provided by whoever wants to be the stakeholder that takes it over. And we have a number of plans. We've talked with a number of different communities and also with a, a legal and a lawyer that handles these things has given us a lot of guidance. And we come up with a plan to, a couple of different plans that we've come up with, but basically either a not-for-profit or if an entity wants to take it over. But the thing being is that before we can proceed much further, we need to talk to the stakeholders uh, in this whole thing for delivering animal service and to make sure that as far as the village is concerned, as being a stakeholder holding the CON, is that well, to see if the village has any interest whatsoever in having anything to do with running at the animal service or to uh, any interest in down the road taking it over, running it, or they would just rather transfer that certificate of need to a not-for-profit or another organization that is uh, willing to take on the job of delivering EMS service to this area. And that's pretty much where we're at right now, is that we need to contact the stakeholders, which will be both the village and the town of Walton, as well as the fire district, to find out who, if any of the above, are interested in taking and running this service. And if not, the plan is to probably put together a group as a not-for-profit uh, to take over and to provide the people in the village and town of Walton with EMS service, and not have it end up here like it has up in the northern part of the county in Stanford with no animal service, as well as uh, almost 200 other spots across New York State where this has happened, where the local entity can no longer, on the voluntary basis, handle the EMS services that are out there. So that's pretty much what we uh, want to bring to the board, is basically, is the village interested in um, pursuing anything to delivering EMS services, and if not, uh, the committee was just looking for some type of, uh, I'm not really a political person, whether it be a resolution or a vote that they're not interested, because the last thing we would ever want to happen would be to pursue putting together a not-for-profit or whatever model we're going to look at, and then all of a sudden having the village say, well, wait a minute, uh, we'd be interested in doing this, and that would definitely uh, create a little bit of confusion. Right. Um, so that's pretty much what we're looking for. Just, just so that everybody here on the board knows is that uh, we, uh, that's what it's doing. It's feeding back to me. There, I just muted it for now. Um, pretty much what that is, uh, we hold the CO and the village does. Which is a certificate of need from the Department of Health. I can hear you, Dave, but I'm feedback, so I got you on mute for a moment while I talk. I put you on mute for a few minutes. It's feeding back through my phone. But anyways, but anyways. Uh, we need to figure out whether we want to take over an ambulance service ourselves or sign it over, trans trans transfer it over to a, another organization. You're, you're feeding back, Dave. I just put you on mute for a minute. Either way. What, the, what is the certificate called? Certificate, certificate of need comes from the Department of Health. In order to run an ambulance service in New York State, you need. I'm going to put you on mute, mute David. Who holds that? We hold that. According to the Department of Health, we hold it. The village. We thought it was transferred to the fire district when the fire district was formed. The Department of Health said the wrong form was assigned something. So they claim we still have the certificate of need. So the question is, do we want to keep it? Um, well, is the fire department willing to assume it? No. The fire department doesn't. They're, they're, they're providing the service now. And, and thinking and, that they had the they don't want it. No, the district thought they had the, they, they everybody thought, thought they it had. was, everybody thought when they formed the district, 
everything was transferred to the district. Okay. It wasn't. That certificate wasn't transferred. So uh, right. everyone's been operating as though the fire district held this certificate. Correct. And everything's been fine right now, but what's going on is we are losing calls. We're dropping calls. We get 10 calls. We only, we're only answering six or seven. I'm just, this is just throwing a number out. We've reached that point where we've dropped enough calls that we need to do something. And our thought is, is this organ or this group that we have now, the, the ones that are looking at the long long range plan, is that nobody wants to give up the service. We, we feel that our community and everybody deserves it and they should have it. But right now, we're not able to maintain the level of calls of what we should have. Now, this isn't saying that uh, the village can do, or they say the district, anybody, the village town, everybody can just walk away and say, we're not going to do it. We're not providing an ambulance service because uh, it's not working. I don't know. too close to their computers. But anyways, you look at it, 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 everybody can walk away from it. We don't have to have an ambulance because it's, it's not essential, according to New York State and what is it, 30, 39 other states? Yeah, most are the same way. Most states are that way. Believe it or not, ambulance service is not essential. Police, fire, are. So, given that, we feel that it's still it's it's a necessity because right now, if we had nothing, you're going to call for an ambulance, and you're going to have to wait for a paid service or another or another village or somebody to come in and, and, and pick you up which could be ours. So, but I don't believe we are the ones that uh, want to carry on with this. Uh, talking through with the lawyers and stuff that we've talked with through the, sort of, uh, through the, through the fire department and stuff. Um, so forming a, either a not-for-profit or a ambulance district. Then we just sign it over to them and they run it. And they provide the service. Just to understand, as a village, we could have an ambulance service and we could charge for the use of it. A fire district, because it is a volunteer fire district, cannot charge anybody for any of their services. So everybody working for the fire department during Emma is a volunteer. Now Sydney, they formed a not-for-profit corporation totally divested from any any political organization. It's entirely separate. And they are for profit. So they charge as, as any 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 paid ambulance service does too. Hancock, the town took it over. And I believe they contract with them. I'm mm -hmm. not sure whether they contract with them, whatever. Anyway, the town is subsidizing. So what they're asking us, do we want to operate an ambulance service? We could charge for it. We would have to. Yes. We because you're going to have to hire people to run. Because mm -hmm. you're looking at a million dollars a year to start out so it's an ambulance. runs about a million, yeah, a million dollars a year, right? We just had your budget. Yep. It's a million fact, dollars a year. I've got this here. I'll leave this down on the table if anybody wants. This is something that we, these are notes and everything from all of our meetings and from us talking with Sydney Hancock, um, yeah, things without, like that. Without getting into all the, all the things in the hows and where's and why for's, but uh, Sydney started out, somebody gave them some money, they started, they were a startup, they're a not-for-profit, uh, they're breaking even. Hancock started out, the town gave them, I think it was a quarter of a million dollars the first year just to get it going. And I think they right now they maintain it. I think they're giving him I think they, around thirty thousand dollars a year, thirty that's forty thousand. I heard, but then I'm not sure whether that's. Yeah, right. I don't either. We haven't. They've, 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 they've never reached a, a level play where they're with their break even service. Yeah, they continue to make. <clears throat> or we can do like uh, Dave even said with the village of Sydney. They told their people in their village and town that three months from now we're done. And three months came up, nobody did anything about it, and they were done. So what they did is they formed a first responder group, which means you give a go back to all the first responder first responders. They get toned out. At the same time, they'll tone out an ambulance service. So that uh, first responder comes and 
performs whatever they're qualified to do on you, but you may wait an hour or better. I know the other day they said they had a call up there. Uh, somebody was having seizures. I don't know what it was, but they ended up waiting for an ambulance coming from Sydney. It was the near state. Stanford, she's talking about Stanford. Stanford, Stanford, Stanford to Sydney. Stanford. Sydney went to Stanford to do that call, and it was over an hour. So these are things that need to be looked at. It's just, they can go any of those ways, and most everybody is leaning towards, at least I am, and I know, I think Dick's thinking the same way, and probably you guys are too, is that we find a group and form a either an ambulance service or a not-for-profit, and we just sign it over to them, and they provide the service. And then... Uh, they sign the certificate over here. Yes, yes. We just agree to give it to them. Now, there is, there's there's cost this conversation about. because... It's been found out that we ultimately hold this piece of paper that everybody thought that the fire district has been holding right. for, for how long? Well, since eighty no ninety. I forget when they were first performed in the, in the mid mid sixties. Yeah. Well, this, this certificate right now is from seventy four, I think it is. But uh, when it came up, it but when it when they changed over to a district was ninety one, ninety two. A little over twenty years ago. Yeah. Years ago. So. So no one's realized that the village has held the certificate for more than 20 years? Not until probably six well, years, years ago when we first started talking there? about this. Yeah. Uh, haven't got, the Department of Health came down and they said that and there was actually a gentleman who used to be around here. He says, oh no, our records still show that it wasn't transferred. And everybody said, it was all transferred at once. And he says, well, we didn't record it so it doesn't count. So, so we have the certificate? No. We physically have it? No. It's over on West Street. At the fire district. Yeah. Okay. But it isn't signed over to them. It still says it was, that we are the holders. It was originally made out to the Walton Emergency Squad, which at that time was part of the village, because they had the fire department and, and it was run by the, the fire department. Uh, when the whole fire department and everything was transferred, the Department of Health doesn't recognize that as being a transfer to the CON. Basically, there's a fee. Well, we don't yeah, don't a fee needs have to, have to be paid happen. in order no. for it to be done. So, so how is the Department of Health going to recognize the village of Walton making a decision in something they haven't been involved in for 20 years? It's, it's uh, we, basically, if we say we'll surrender it to, to somebody, uh, they can do it. it, it there's, a fee, there's a fee involved to get them to do that, which we wouldn't have to pay. It's just the recipient has to pay. So, um, let me turn Dave back up here. There you go. I just, I just unmuted you, Dave. Okay, yes, Steve. Um, is there any questions for Dave, or? Uh, no, just, uh, the, the, that was the one thing that uh, was a discussion was uh, uh, contacting the village board and finding out what was going on with the Uh, really 
other questions for David? So with that being said, does anybody want to make a motion on anything right now, or do you want to digest this for a while? This is like finding you have an illegitimate kid somewhere. You yeah. want it back. Is this something I need to like talk with Dave Murphy about? Probably, but I mean, I just don't know which, what direction you guys really like to go. Can we make that decision? I mean, a lot of people are relying on the service. Shouldn't this be public input? Well, it's not a question of public input. The, the, the problem is no, the, money. the fire district can't afford to hire anybody unless the million dollars was going to be how much in your taxes? $270 per $100,000 of assessed value well, to cover just ambulance service. Either. Well, that would go to the village and the town. Each person in the village and town would have to pay that if this thing were to run by the fire district. I think we need to transfer the certificate. So I, I you know, the fire district, is, is, if they're going to hire people, we've got to find a way to get out of the business because they cannot charge. That's right. The district, for some reason, cannot charge. They're be, working on it, but they cannot charge. Do we want to be the operator of an ambulance service? No. We can't afford it. Okay. We could charge for it. But then we have to hire an administration to run it. Right. Okay. Somebody would have to take care of hiring and firing, and then they would also have to take care of billing, and they have to do collections. That's a whole, yep, that's a animal. Yep. Who do we transfer the certificate to? That's the thing. If we don't want to do this, and we send this back to the long-range planning group, we are the ones that will either set it up as a not-for-profit or a ambulance district. The group that we have in these, the long-range plan at the fire hall, which has the town, the village, the district, the fire department all working together oh, on this. Good. We would form it uh, with the help of Terry oh, Hannigan. Hannigan. <laughs> I can never, I want to say Brannigan, but it's Hannigan. Oh, Hannigan. He is the lawyer that uh, has been working with uh, us, and he works with a lot of other departments to help them come up with these plans. He keeps saying we and us, but at that point he's talking about his president president of the fire department hat that he's wearing, not the mayor's hat. So. No, I'm talking about that. No, I'm talking about that. When I'm saying we, I mean the group that right. I'm, that I'm part of. Actually, as a there's about right. 10 people. There's several people. Yeah. But usually when you're saying we here, it's yeah. So village. we'd be transferring that certificate to whichever we decide up there. That's responsible in deciding. And we would, we would have, uh, we, they, we would have to get a board for them, assign a board. They would have a board. Not the village. No, 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 no. They would be their own board. They Thank would you. be the ones that would be taking care of it. And then they would have to hire people to do it. It's, like I said, I'm going to leave this down here. There's the models from Sydney, Hancock, and once, well, everything we've talked to, the lawyers and stuff is all in here. I'll leave it on the table down there for you guys you to look at. Because it's Dansville. And that's, it, yep. And that's the village that did do it. Yeah, Dansville did do it. But, uh, They've got a model in there with their budgets. But the budgets are high. I mean, it's, there's no ways around it. The ambulance service is an expensive uh, business. And it's, uh, I don't know how I want to say, it's not very profitable coming back in unless you've got the proper people in place to collect and uh, bill properly. I mean, for example, AMR, which I'm, I'm sure you've all seen around here, they used to keep some ambulances up in Hamden and, and other places. They found it was not profitable to work in this area. So they pulled them out. Yep. That's why you don't see them around that much. Um, and that's time. the reason it takes so long. Right. They may be coming from Davenport. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 
from what I've listened to thus far, I have to agree with Nate Jameson. It has to be transferred. Okay. I think all, all, all they're asking for right now is to say that we don't want it, and, and we would transfer to whatever organization is going to take over either. I mean, if, if it were either. AMR, AMR already has operating authority here. Mm -hmm. So if they just nothing happened, they'd be the ones that would have the operating authority, which is <coughs> her. Uh, but this one is available, which could be set up so it just covers the residents in this area. So do we have to motion right now to transfer the certificate of need? No. Like you said, I, I make a motion that we have no intention of running an ambulance service. I'll second that motion. And, and forward that for motion made and seconded for us to not run an ambulance service. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry on that. Now, as far as handing over or doing anything with the CN, uh, CNO, is, uh, or CON, I mean, uh, we will talk to uh, Merzik, our council, and then also we've got a ways to go with our long range committee as far as how it's got to go. They're going to do this presentation to the town also to get the towns on it, and they're going to talk to the town of Hamden also to ask them about it and let them know what's going on because we do, our fire district is part of the town of Hampton, where it runs up uh, East Brook. So that everybody who is, like Dave said, stakeholders are going to be aware of what's going on. All right. Well, that being said, let's carry on. Abstracts, payments and invoices. Have they had a chance to look everything over? Yes. Motion that we pay the abstracts. Second. Motion made second to pay the abstracts. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Department heads. We've already done Delaware Engineering. We don't have uh, anything from anybody except Chief. And I'm second to Dick's motion. I did. Thank you. Okay, so the only thing we've got right now is something from the police. Is, uh, is he going to try to chime in? I'll check. Hello, Joe. Hey, man. How are you tonight? Good. You're our, you're on speakerphone with everybody. You have them on ears. Yeah. Okay. We're all good. We are live. Ready? Go ahead. Give your report, sir. Okay. Um, so, Rich, I believe Rich emailed everybody at the table, correct? Yes. 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 Okay. So pretty consistent with last month's uh, number of call volume, anyways. Yep. Just so everybody uh, knows, you guys are running just about 300 give or take one way or the other, calls a month, that's a lot of calls. Yeah, quite a few calls um, compared to the past winter so far, so we're, we're, uh, we're still pretty busy. Right. Um, there's a couple of things that I had for the, for the board tonight. Um, I believe everybody got my email right. Yes. yes, on the request yes. for the radios and the... the uh, outfitting the new police car and no. for the new computer. Yes. So, um, I'm going into that. Yeah, this is kind of new to me, guys, so you have to excuse me a little bit because i got like, two computers and cell phone that's stuck going on right now. But, uh, <laughs> you're high, um, you're high tech in it then, right, huh? Join the club over there. Yeah. 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 Chief, would you be opposed if I made a motion that the board, based on your notes, um, accept the um, the bids, the proposals for outfitting the new police car and for the new computer. Would would you be opposed if I made that motion? Uh, no, actually, Mr. Sian, I wouldn't be opposed at all. I would second that motion. Then I would make the motion that we accept those proposals to outfit the new police car and to purchase the new computer. Both are budgeted, and um, there is money coming back to us that would lend itself toward the computer. Yeah. So I say aye to that, and you second that? I second. It's covered. It's, it's done. Okay. Motion, second. Motion, made, motion made and seconded to 
uh, go ahead with the two proposals that uh, Chief Dadazio has put forward. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. That part. Yeah, like Ian was saying, we have, um, we have some uh, money that's come back from the district attorney's office from uh, asset forfeiture seizures that we've had on traffic stops over the course of the last year. Okay. So that money will be coming back uh, to uh, help offset that. Okay. Um, anything else that you want to bring up? Um, I do have to uh, meet with you guys in executive session, so I'll stay on, but no, there's nothing right now. Officer Finch. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jody. Sorry about that. Yeah, uh, Officer Finch has uh, passed the uh, most recent civil service test. He's reachable on this test. Um, he was hired last year, or beginning of this year, actually. Mm -hmm. um, for a uh, provisional status, I would uh, I would request that the board uh, um, place him uh, on full civil service based off of the last test. I would make that motion. Second. Motion made second to uh, bump them up to the civil service status. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. And one, one last thing, if you guys... Uh, um, we do have a new uh, part-time police officer. Uh, name is uh, Morgan Stevens. Uh, just recently graduated the uh, Wellsbury Academy. I think I touched on that maybe last month. But uh, so she'll, she'll be out in the community. Um, she's been doing a fantastic job as of so far, and uh, expect great things from her. Very good. I was down at the station the other day and congratulated her on passing. So it was good. All right. Does anybody else have anything else for the chief? Uh, no. no. Just nope. Jody on uh, Officer Finch, um, rate of pay and full time, just for clarification. Yes, he will be um, designated permanent full time instead of provisional full time. Same rate of pay, 2215. Okay. All right, chief. We will, uh, when we get ready for executive, I will uh, call you back up, okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, trustees reports. Dick? Well, now the chief is off, yes. <laughs> we have our, the uh, uh, survey we have done with, with the, for the police uh, reformation ordered by the, the state, and we've gotten a number of replies to it. Uh, some are positive, some point out some things that they would like to see change. Uh, I would like to get anybody that has any to get to, to the clerk's office by the 15th of this month so that we can, we can have an independent review board to take a look at it, make recommendations. We will come back. We as a board have to make uh, suggestions or decisions with the chief and any changes that we think are necessary to make it uh, more community-minded. And uh, hopefully we'll have that done ready for the March meeting, so that we can approve all that, have it done, uh, get a report sent to the state, and that way we will be eligible for funding. We're not going to take it away from us. And I would like to point out that uh, you can get blank forms <coughs> at the clerk's office, or you can print your... I'm hoping... Okay, we're rolling. Please. Me too. We're rolling again? Yep. Okay. Um, Jody, I don't think you have any further questions. Okay. 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 I just had another question about So you're, you're done with your part of your report? That's it. Yeah. Right. Steve, do you have anything to report? Sir, I just wanted to make a point to everybody that since the new ownership of Kraft took place, we need to have a meeting with them and with the yeah. engineering company. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. We need to get set up with them and do that. I think we should do that between now and 
maybe the, the engineering company when they set up the uh, meeting. That right, then we will try to, we'll, we'll figure out something and we'll go down and have a chat with them and see what's going on with the new owners and stuff coming in. Anything else? Any mm -hmm. treatment plan? We talked a lot of that with uh, Bill. Okay. Hey. Uh, well, with the uh, theater, I was in t I've been in touch with uh, RSS and they say that they, they have a uh, plan in progress for the opening of the theater, but there's no set date yet. I'm anxiously awaiting a set, a set date. We would love for people to see our new balcony, and we would love to dedicate the Andrea Paternoster room upstairs. Uh, at the parks, our, our village skating rink is up and, up and running, and a lot of people have been using it, so it's very popular. Uh, we've been uh, doing some grooming on the trail around the uh, Austin Lincoln Park, as well as the trail along the river at the uh, new green space slash flood mitigation area. And we're ho hoping to expand that trail as well. So we encourage people to come out. We also have a very nice uh, s sleigh riding hill over at Austin Lincoln Par Park. A lot of ki kids have been enjoying that, and we encourage people to come out with their sleds and uh, have fun with the park, even though it's winter time. And uh, I, I was uh, prepared to make a motion about inviting the public into our meetings, and I do think that we need to do that. But we need to uh, work on how we're going to do that and how many people we can, we can let in. And uh, there, there are details. And I will be on that over the next month, and there will be more information next month. And we hope to reopen these meetings to the public as soon as humanly possible. And I think that's what I have for today, sir. Okay. Thank you. Eric? Um, I do not. I do not have anything uh, in addition uh, other than I received all my budget information, the DPW. Okay. So, uh, good to move forward. Good to move forward. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. For me, um, just a couple of small things. One is uh, people just remember to. Uh, Clear your walks after a storm. We've got quite a few uh, places that people have been taken care of. Uh, our code enforcement's gone out, sent some letters out. Uh, we do have a contractor that will come, uh, and you will be charged to have your sidewalk cleared if you don't do it. Um, the other is uh, we, I think it was a year ago, if you correct me, that we opened up uh, for snowmobiles, mm -hmm. roughly a year ago. And they are using that to come down into the village. There is a marked trail. It's off of uh, West Street to come down in to get fuel, snacks, food, whichever. Um, just, uh, just a reminder, I know I talked with the club today just to make sure that people are paying attention to stay on the trail and not come into the village wherever they think they need to come in. There's a specific trail. Please follow it. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I think I mentioned everything that I needed to. All right, we'll go to... Election inspectors. Elections are going to be on the 16th of March. Um, do we have people that have been said that they would do it for us? Yep, Max Maxine Locker, Joanne Pomeroy, and Marge Rutherford are my recommendations. So I need a motion. I'll make that motion. I'll second. second. Motion made second to uh, go with these people as our uh, election inspectors. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? What's that noise? Water related. Sounds like heat pipes. This is the HVAC. Yeah. All right. Our next. The elections. Sorry, just to backtrack. The election inspectors. That's 1275. 1250. All right. Uh, number eight on our sheet is the tax cap, which is 1.031%. 1.013%. Yes, I missed a zero and a one and a point. <laughs> what she said. <laughs> uh, we got to set a public hearing uh, for uh, an override on that if we need to use, do an override. So, when do we want to set that, Jody? What would be the best to do for our next meeting? I make that motion. Second. Motion made second to uh, do a public hearing on the override of the tax cap on our next uh, scheduled uh, 
meeting in March. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Cheers. Aye. I assume you're all aware of that our, our taxable property has been reduced by approximately a million dollars. Mm -hmm. Which is going to make it tighter than 1%, correct? Yes. Yeah, a whole lot tighter. Whole it's lot almost 1% to get back to where we left off last year. Yeah. So anything increased is going to go on top of that 1%, so we are going to probably exceed that 1% by sure. Um, number nine is the 2021 budget amendments, C C yeah, CDBG grant expenses. G eight one one zero point three zero zero. We didn't have anything set up for those expenses. Right. So I'm just starting a line item for those. Yeah. And we're gonna offset that with the, some of the contingency money we had set aside. Right. Because right now we're gonna have what 30, 30, 37, dollars yeah. so for the grant writer. So I put four thousand. Yep. Okay. So I need a motion for that, please. I make the motion. I'll second. Motion is seconded to the, do the budget amendment for the uh, grant expenses. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Watershed Memorandum of Agreement. We had a chance to look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's everybody's pleasure with that? I think it's a great opportunity to uh, you know, reassert our authority over our, our property. Mm -hmm. That relationship with the city. Um, so uh, to understand that is that, that that's requesting that we need to do a, a resolution to to review. Uh, is it to review? No, I, I think it's to. As I understood it, if we don't do anything right now, the, the yellow space on the map is the entire village. Mm -hmm. They can't take anything. Right. If we don't do anything, it just continues. It's an opportunity to, for us to, you know, give them some property if they could. Yeah. But we don't really have to take any action at all. Right. You know, so that's the way I read it. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't be in favor of giving them any. No. Yeah. But it's, 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 it doesn't take any action to do that. No. They okay. just have to take property off from our tax rolls, and we we don't need to do that, especially now in this day and age. Okay. So we want to leave it the same. I think to leave it the same way it is. They can't take anything within the village. Right. Yeah. Okay. We don't need a motion or anything on that. We're just going to leave it as is. Okay. Oh, thank God. New York State quarantine policy. I don't know about this one, Did anybody translate it? Oh, that was it. Long yeah. Yeah. Is it. Is it like one of those executive orders that was formed to the governor's mansion? I mean, does it say it? I didn't understand it, so I, I, I couldn't even. What do we have to do? Accept it or not accept it? Do we have a cho choice in the matter? No choice from what I, what I read. That's what I, that's what I took away. Right, but we have to put something in yeah, place. In place, and we have a, a writing there that we have in place. Right, and Linda Pinner from Delaware County sent us down their template that oh. they're going to use. Okay. So, so we need that as a boilerplate. And we've got to drop our name and stuff in place. So we need to accept that or not accept it. Right. That's all. That's it. That's it. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. If you didn't see it. Yeah. Purpose. And all she, all Linda did is modify it so it looked like Delaware County is from the state form. And then Jody modified it so it's for. Oh. I'd motion that we adopt that template. Second. Motion made second to adopt the New York State quarantine policy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right. Now we have the request for the Little League field, and they have come up with, I think, a pretty darn good plan as far as the 
COVID-19 regulations and guidelines. Um, has everybody had a chance to look at that? Um, I don't know if we want to approve this now or should we send this to Dave and have him look at it just to see if it's something we can do. Well, I mean, it's if we operated under the premise that it was all allowed, we would have to approve it anyway. I mean, we would approve it anyway. Right. So, as long as we're operating the way we're supposed to, the way the governor says we're supposed to, wouldn't we all approve it anyway? I would in a heartbeat. Me too. So, what would you like to do with the little league proposal? Motion to approve it. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve the Little League proposal. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, anything else? I don't have anything else either. Does there have anything else under regular business? No, sir. I would like to have us go into executive session. Make a motion. Second. Uh, motion made and seconded to executive session. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I've got to go.